white rays from the sun are incident normally on a magnifying glass. The magnifying glass directs the light to an area of radius, tiny, tiny radius. If you've never played with a magnifying glass before, please do so. Find a hot day, go outside, and make the magnifying glass focus all the sunlight on a tiny, tiny spot. For example, an ant, I don't know, or something that you want to burn. Okay? And then you'll see the poor insect just fizzle, burn, and explode. Psst, psst. Okay, anyway, what are we doing here? So the tells magnifying glass, we got cross-section, radius, intensity of the sun on the magnifying glass is 1.3. So this whole part here is incoming rays from the sun. It's 1.3 kilowatts per meter. What does that mean? I don't know. We'll find out. Calculate the power of the light from the sun incident on the magnifying glass. So intensity here is 1.3 kilowatts per meter. What power is this though? It really depends on the area of this lens, this round lens. And the equation here, which is actually in the waves chapter, is the intensity is power per unit area. Power over area. Okay, there we go. So if you all know the intensity is 1.3, let's write that down. Power, don't know. Area. What's the area of our lens? Uh, circular in cross section. Okay, so we need an area, probably pi r square with the radius given. Okay. Okay, okay. So we go pi r. Um. Please convert your cm, okay? So times 10, negative 2 cm squared. So power at the end of the day should be 12.354 or 12 watts rounded to 2 SF. So one mark is for final answer. One mark for is for this very important equation. Not very popular in past year. It's making one of the rare appearances in paper 2. Uh, this is... C1 for the equation. All right. So that's for the magnifying glass part. Now they want us to calculate the intensity of the light on the area A, which is the small little area there. So maybe the intensity here is like, ah, uh, it's kind of okay. By the time you focus all the lens, all that energy into one tiny spot, ooh. It's so hot, you could start a fire. It's like a laser beam almost. So, we use the same equation again. Intensity, power over area. But it's the same... Hmm, power. Power of the light. So, intensity will change. Power is the same. So, we can use the 12 watts. Area, we go pi r square again. But this time, for a very much smaller radius. So 1.5 times 10, negative 3, square. Okay, so this one will be a very random number. 1697652. Or round it off, standard form, please. 1.7. Uh, how many? What power is this? Huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, dot. Okay, 1.7 times 10 to the 6. Okay. So this is one mark just for the final answer. Wow, that's many times more. Beginning here is 1.3 times 10 to the 3. Now when you focus all that energy, it becomes 1.7 times 10 to the 6. No wonder the ants will be fried if you focus the light on them. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, a laser beam. Oh, so now we change the story. We're looking at the laser beam now. We have an electromagnetic wave of certain frequency in a vacuum. Show that the wavelength is this. So you see the lambda? You see the F? We need an equation that got F and lambda. So that's going to be V equals to F lambda. What is the speed of an electromagnetic wave though? Mm, the speed is a constant. We call it C, which is the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power of 8. It is given in the data formula sheet so if you can't memorize it you should know where to find it 
So 3 times 10 about 8. Frequency, 3.7 times 10 to the 15. And wavelength. We just need to show that we can get this answer. <laughs> so, we just, so press the calculator, you should get about 8.108 times 10, negative 8. Okay, so you show that you know this equation. Write it out. V equals F lambda. Then you submit values to get final answer. Ah, this is the final mark. Lah. So what's the region of this electromagnetic spectrum for this wave? Uh, this, you kind of have to memorize the wavelength of the main regions. Personally, I memorize them in nanometers, which is 10 to the negative 9. So this is about 81 nanometers. And then I kind of memorize the visible light range. So let's draw a visible light range. Violet. Okay, so red color wavelength is about 700 nanometers. Okay, shorter and shorter, shorter, shorter until violet. This is about 400 nanometers. This is red, violet. This is the visible light range. So this 81 uh, is really kind of smaller on this end. So what's smaller than violet? Ultraviolet. What's longer than, inf than red? Infrared. That's like 1,000 or few thousand nanometers. So I'm just going with ultraviolet. We'll go with ultraviolet. Okay, so ultraviolet. So go memorize the electromagnetic spectrum, the numbers, uh, at least the wavelength or frequency. Okay, next. So they change topic again. Uh, not change topic. We do something else with this laser. So the beam for the laser now passes through a diffraction grating. 2,400 lines per millimeter. Okay, so we have a detector that will go in the arc to detect the maxima. These are called the bright fringes produced by the waves. So bright fringes is like, you know, laser light come in, pew, 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 pew. At these spots, you will see a very bright laser light. At other spots, it doesn't exist. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, what do they want us to find though? Mm, calculate the number of maxima detected as the detector moves through 180 along the line. Wow, okay. Number of maxima detected in total. So this is in total. So if you're not sure where to start, the first thing is we think of diffraction grating has an equation. We should write it down first. So n lambda is d sine theta. What is all this num what 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 what's all these alphabets for? Okay. So n here is the, 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 the order of maxima. For example, the middle maxima is called n0. The next one is n1. The next one is n2. Eventually you kind of hit the limit. You can't go beyond you can't go backwards. So your limit is this angle here. The biggest maxima you can have. So if we can find out what is the biggest number n, uh, then I think we can know how many maxima there will be in total that's detected. So for this, let's think about it. What's the maximum angle we can have? I think you should be less than 90 degrees because you don't want the, the, the ends to go backwards, right? The maxima can't go backwards. So the limit of theta is 90 degrees. Let's write that down. This... Hmm. The theta maximum is 90 degrees. Or I should say it should be less than 90 degrees. So n value, whatever that is, for the wavelength, which is 80 or 8.1 times 10 negative 8, for a grating of d, what is d? D is a property of the grating itself. So diffraction, diffraction grating kind of looks like a slide, like this, a piece of glass. And a machine will cut the glass to make a lot of holes, like this. Many, 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 many small lines that you cannot even see with your eyes. Okay. 
The hint here is these 2,400 lines per millimeter tells the hint for the D value. So D value here means in one millimeter, you cut into 2,400 lines. This is your D. Okay, it should be in the unit of meters uh, length. So this is what we're going to plug into the equation. In one millimeter of this glass piece, you cut 2,400 vertical lines. Okay, so let's plug this value in the equation. So let's go. We got one millimeter cut into 2,400. And the sign here, we're going to put sign 90. Maybe that's our maximum idea. Yeah. So you should get uh, end value of 5.144. Uh, but these end values should be whole numbers. So I'm going to round it off and say, therefore, the maximum or the highest end number is going to be 5. We cannot reach 6 yet. 5.1 is not quite 6, so we got to round down to the nearest whole number. Okay. Uh, in other words, you could also, an alternative, alternative way of writing this part out, is to say your n lambda should be less than d sine 90, which is 1. So n should be less than d over lambda. So when we get n less than 5.144, you just got to go down to the next whole number, 5. So this whole number only. So is the answer 5? Wrong. Not yet. We're not done yet. Patience. This is the highest n number. Which means, to go back to this, we have hmm, n0 is the middle one. Oh yeah, I'm going to use a thinner one. This is n0. Then there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is n1, n2, n3, n4, n5. So the detector should detect like, I don't know, 6 already here. Hey, but don't forget the other side also got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> so here is n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3, n equals to 4, n equals to 5. How many in total? You go and count all the lines. Ah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. So it should be 11 in total. Five on each side. Don't forget the middle one as well. So, nice fan. So let's write it down. So in total, you got five on each side. And don't forget the middle n equals zero. So this total is 11 maxima that you will see uh, by the detector. So 11. <laughs> so it's tricky. So one mark for the equation here, C1. One mark for your diffraction grating. You know what the D is. This is V1. Sorry, C1. Then if you get your 5.1, find your correct values, it's B1. And then you remember that, oh wait, I want the total in how many in total? Oh, that's the final one, A1. One, two, three, four, four marks. Wow, so quite a big question. Okay, let's continue on. So now we change the laser with a wavelength of 300 nanometers now. It's a slightly different wavelength. What was the wavelength just now again? 81. So we go from 81 nanometers to 300 nanometers. Okay. What do you want me to do? Explain. Without calculation. What happens to the number of maxima now detected? Assume the detector is also sensitive to the wavelength of electromagnetic waves. So we need to think of how the, the, the largest n number change, right? Just now we said the largest was five. If we change the wavelength, how will this n number change? So I'm gonna use this idea here, same concept. Okay. We go with uh, n lambda d sine theta but I want to look for what happens if 
I want to look at sine 90. Okay, whatever angle it is has to be less than sine 90. So whatever n value will be related by this kind of relationship, d and lambda. So if I change my wavelength, this wavelength is getting longer. So my wavelength increase. So when this lambda increase, if I assume the d is constant, then n is proportional to 1 over lambda. So lambda increase, n will decrease. Mm. So there is less maxima in total. So I'm going to write here in English, the maximum n has decreased. Can't go until n equals to 5 like just now. So there's less maxima in total. So how to explain now? Mm, okay. Two bucks. We need to explain. All right. Uh, so we can say um, number of maxima. So I'm going to start with that. So the number of maxima detected decreases. Why uh, must explain? Oh, uh, uh, because, because, because the wavelength decrease. Decreases. Now, if you want to be a bit extra, you could also list this out uh, as you're working at the bottom. Just kind of, you know, just FYI. N proportional to 1 over lambda. You kind of, you can mention that if you want to. Just extra bonus. But here, uh, if you mention wavelength decrease, that's your method, ma. And then you say the number of maxima therefore decreases. That's your A1. Now, tricky thing about M1, A1 is you must get the M1 in order to also get the A1. They are linked. If you didn't mention M1, you cannot get the A1. Okay. So that's this uh, maxima question. So in case you haven't seen this experiment before, um, this is what happens if you have a laser down here, shoots a light at the screen. If I put this diffraction grating in the path of the laser, ta-da, I get this. So you see how all these maxima are spread out? And you see these white dots, or white dots, green dots. These are the ones you can see. So what happens is if I increase the wavelength, they get further apart. And consequently, there are less maxima that can fit into this 90 degree area. Okay, they can't go backwards. So <laughs> if I decrease the wavelength, there's just more of these. Look at look, so many. Okay, so this is what it means when you see the equation. This is what it looks like in real life if you could see it. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful in helping to visualize a little bit on what's what's the physical thing happening behind the equations. But yeah, that's all for this question.